It's shaping up to be one of the most unpredictable general elections in living memory. As the parties fight for every advantage, we bring them together for the daily politics election debates. We've been through the manifestos and now we'll put to the test some of the men and women who want to form the next government, wield influence over it and make the big decisions about the issues that will affect all of our lives after May the 7th. Welcome to the Daily Politics Election Debates of 2015. I'm Andrew Neil. Today we're focusing on education. It's an area of policy that has big implications for families up and down the country, from nurseries right the way through to universities. And today the party spokesman will be debating this key concern. Nicky Morgan is the Conservative Education Secretary. David Laws is the Schools Minister. He's a Lib Dem. James Humphreys represents the Green Party. Jonathan Arnott represents UKIP, and Tristram Hunt is Labour's Shadow Education Secretary. Plus, I'm joined by the BBC's Education Editor, Branwyn Jeffries. In a moment, our politicians will be setting out why they believe they've got the right answers in this key policy area. But first, a reminder of what's at stake. The coalition government embarked on some big reforms to schools in England, once compared by former Education Secretary Michael Gove to Mao's Long March. More than 400 free schools, which have greater freedoms than those run by local authorities, have opened since 2010. And the number of academies, first introduced under Labour, has exploded. Now 55% of all state-funded secondaries are academy schools, with primary academies following along behind. Regardless of the nature of the schools, England needs more of them, with warnings that 880,000 extra places are required over the next decade. Under the coalition, there have been significant reforms to both the national curriculum and exams in an attempt to answer charges of grade inflation. But in a competitive global market, how well equipped are children to face the challenges ahead? And are they being given the right vocational skills the economy needs? Polls show education has always been a big concern for the public as the Lib Dems learned to their cost when they went back on a manifesto promise and supported a rise in tuition fees. In the next hour, you decide which of the parties has the best plan for improving education. Well, just before we came on air, our politicians drew lots to decide the order in which they would make their pitches. Nikki Morgan was the lucky or the unlucky winner, so she goes first. Nikki Morgan, please take your position. Nikki Morgan's been the Education Secretary since last summer. She took over from her at times controversial predecessor, Michael Gove. Before that, she was a minister at the Treasury. The Conservative Party has a clear plan for every part of a young person's education from nursery to graduation. That plan is simple. We want every young person, regardless of birth or background, to go on and achieve their full potential. And that plan is working. It has led to a million more pupils studying in good or outstanding schools, gold standard vocational qualifications that employers trust, and record numbers of young people from disadvantaged backgrounds securing a place at university. We've done it through high expectations for every pupil, trusting our outstanding teachers and empowering parents to demand more. In the next parliament, we're committing to making sure every child gets the benefit of these reforms and every family has an excellent local school to send their child to. Uh, Nikki Morgan, you were brought in to placate the teaching unions. They pretty much hated your predecessor, Michael Gove. So can you tell us one thing that you've done that Mr Gove wouldn't have done? Well, one of the things that I uh, picked up on very quickly on taking up the uh, Office of Secretary of State for Education was the concerns about workload. And that's why in November I launched the Workload Challenge, uh, which uh, had a response of 44,000 uh, teachers submitted their ideas on what more we could do to support them in their very important job. And Mr Gove wouldn't have done that? Well, I think it was something that wasn't done in the first four years and something I felt very passionately needed to be done. OK, thank you. Now, David Laws has been one of the key figures in this coalition government, first as a Treasury Minister and then for the last three years as Education Minister. He's responsible for schools. In government, the Liberal Democrats have protected the school's budget and introduced the game-changing £2.5 billion pupil premium. Now we're making the biggest financial commitment of any of the parties on education. We'll protect the whole education budget, both for prices and for pupils, 
spending two and a half billion pounds more than Labour and five billion pounds more than the Conservatives. We'll use this money to transform the quality of early years education, ensure all teachers are qualified and properly paid and deliver more one-to-one -one tuition. We would also create an independent educational standards authority to stop excessive political meddling in the curriculum. And this Liberal Democrat plan will give every child the opportunity to reach their full potential. David Lodge, you've put education on the front page of your manifesto. Now, given what happened last time you made a major pledge on education, is that really wise? Why should anyone believe you? Yes, I think it is very wise because actually the pledge we put on the front page of our last manifesto was to introduce the two and a half billion pound pupil premium. We've done exactly that and it's changing the life chances of literally millions of children across the country now. It's narrowing the gap between the life chances of advantaged and disadvantaged youngsters. The biggest challenge in English education by a long way. We'll look into that as the debate goes on. David Laws, thank you. James Humphreys is representing the Greens. He used to be the party's chairman and was previously a civil servant at the Department for the Environment and at number 10. In our country, we have excellent schools. We have many skilled and committed teachers. Uh, we have leading universities. Yet somehow, taken together, we just don't have a world-class education system. Uh, Underinvestment and an increasingly fragmented and divisive approach to education are letting down our young people. But it doesn't have to be that way. The Green Party's proposals are about turning the potential into reality. Th this isn't about ideology. When we talk about smaller class sizes or abolishing league tables, it's because all the evidence from this country and abroad is that this will give all our children and young people a better education. We'll put in the resources too. We're absolutely upfront that the richest in Britain would pay more in tax and we would use this to fund education properly from early years right through to further and higher education. And by doing this we can give all our children the education they deserve. Uh, James Humphreys, I, I see that you're an accomplished writer of fiction. Uh, was that useful in helping you to write the Greens' education policies? No, not at all. I mean, I, I, I expected you to come in on money. I didn't expect you to come in on, on novels. But we have looked at this very, very carefully in terms of the numbers that support uh, our policies, uh, the financial backing that we have, where we would make the investment and how we would fund that. But we've also, as I said, we've looked very carefully at what has worked best in the UK, what's worked best internationally, and our proposal are based firmly on that, not ideology, but what works best for our children. All right, thank you. Jonathan Arnott is a UKIP MEP for the North East of England. He's standing for election as an MP in May, and he's a former maths teacher. When I was a teacher, my best successes weren't always the A-star grade students. It was often the children who were inspired, those who achieved a C, D or E grade, which was beyond all expectations. Government policy has resulted in 60-hour working weeks for teachers because of endless paperwork. But I believe we must put our children first. UKIP believes in an education system with different kinds of schools, catering to our children's unique needs, driving excellence in all its forms and developing the skills we need. Like in Germany, there should be no stigma attached to becoming a plumber instead of going to university. And we need to listen to the needs of business to help our young people find jobs when they leave education. Jonathan Arnott, you sat your GCSEs three years early, your A-levels three years early, and you were studying mathematics at university by 15, by the time you were 15. So you're a math genius. Uh, so why don't the UKIP sums add up? Well, our sums absolutely do add up, uh, Andrew, as, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, because we are the only party at this election whose manifesto has been independently costed by a respected think tank, the Centre for Economics and Business Research. OK, thank you for that. Tristram Hunt is Labour's Shadow Education Secretary. It's a job he's held since 2013, and he's also been a lecturer in modern British history. Before I came into politics, I was, as Andrew said, a lecturer in London's East End. I experienced the joy and commitment of teaching firsthand. I saw the power of education to unleash opportunity in some of our poorest communities. So that's what a Labour government wants for all our young people. We've got three priorities. Tackling inequality by reviving Shore Start and delivering 25 hours free childcare. Raising school standards with a world-class teacher for every classroom. 
delivering modern skills for real jobs with top quality apprenticeships. And for those young people who want to go on to university, a cut in tuition fees from £9,000 a year to £6,000 a year. The Labour Party will always support our education system. And that is why we will also protect the entire education budget in real terms. Tristram Hunt, let me quote from your manifesto. Give every young person that gets the grades has the right to a high quality apprenticeship. Why should we trust our children's education to a party whose manifesto is littered with typos, spelling and grammatical mistakes? Well, this is a very, very important uh, issue, Andrew. And one of the issues facing the education system is continuity. So rather than a government coming in, chopping and changing everything that's happened in the recent past, adding to the workload challenge, we'll keep the SPAG test. We'll keep the spelling, punctuation and grammar so that in the future manifestos flow as beautifully as Michael Young's 1945 manifesto did. Uh, so we want rigour and excellence in the education system. Very well, I'm not sure I understood that, but never mind. Let's well, get on. We, we will give you, <laughs> as part of our education system, we will give you a re-education, Andrew. That will be an, a, a priority we can also deliver on. Uh, I can hardly wait. Time uh, now for our three parties to make um, uh, the debate, all the parties here. Let's get on with this uh, debate. And we're going to begin and spend most of our time this afternoon on schools. Now, David Laws, your manifesto is basically a string of criticism about the government's schools policy. Could you remind me who the school's minister is? Well, I am now, and I'm very proud of a terrific number of things that we've delivered in the department. We've delivered the pupil premium, which I was talking about a, a moment ago, from the front page of our uh, Liberal Democrat manifesto last time round. I think it's been the best po education policy that this coalition government has delivered. We've delivered more early years opportunities for two-year-olds from disadvantaged So why do you make all these criticisms of oh, government because, policy? Because in coalition, both sides in the coalition won't get everything that they want. And of course, when you then have to, uh, a, a general election mm. and you put forward your own programme, it won't necessarily be hamstrung what, by some of the things you have. What would Nicky Morgan give you that you wanted? What would she give me? What wouldn't Nicky Morgan give you that you, that well, you wanted? Well, I, I would have thought one of the huge problems for the Conservative Party next time round, uh, whether they're in government by themselves or with other people, will be funding. Today we've had the Institute for Fiscal Studies, as you know. No, no, what I'm, what I'm asking you is what wouldn't she give you in government that you wanted as schools minister? Oh, there were quite a number of things where there were differences between the two of us. Okay, well, let's and, have one. Uh, I think that one of the things that we, that we disagreed on was holding academy chains to account. I, I supported the chief inspector for schools who wanted basically to have Ofsted be able to hold academy chains to account in the same way as he can local authorities. He made that case. Both Michael Gove and Nicky took a different view. Why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you do that, uh, Nicky Morgan? Because um, at the end of the day, what the schools inspector is about is about looking at schools. And there seemed to be some sort of uh, thinking that actually by going into a, a head office or looking at uh, uh, somebody's files, you're going to find out what's going on in the school. There's nothing to stop Ofsted asking an academy sponsor or an academy chain when they're inspecting a school and they can inspect other schools in that chain. What do you do to support this school in terms of making learning better? But, you know, I think the honest answer uh, to what David says is there wasn't a great uh, deal of difference. Mm -hmm. And actually, I do find it puzzling in this. election campaign that the Lib Dems, particularly in relation to education, I think we've got a great record in education over the last five years. A million more pupils in schools rated good or outstanding. I think the Lib Dems should be standing up for well, their we record. Are, we are standing up for a tremendous amount that we achieved. A bit. At the beginning of the government, um, George Osborne actually wanted to cut uh, schools funding. He wanted to freeze it in cash terms. We said no to that. We are at this uh, in this okay. general election, arguing the case for extra money. Okay. This thing about uh, accountability and Ofsted is not a small thing. It's about the whole way in which you hold schools to account and make sure there's improvement. We took the same view as the chief inspector for schools, and I'm sorry that the other side of the coalition did, and I think All you've right. got to drive up standards. You've got to allow Ofsted to look at these things. Dickie Morgan, free schools are at the forefront of uh, your manifesto for this election, but they score rock bottom in the public's opinion of this government's education policies. What? Why do you have a flagship policy that so few people like? 
Well, I think it's partly one of the things I've done since coming into uh, office has been very much about explaining what our whole plan for education has been about. When you explain uh, to parents and, and others what the opportunities that free schools offer, so the opportunity not just to accept what you're given in terms of educational places available, which is what the Labour Party would like parents to put up with what they're given, but to say, no, I'm not happy, I want to set up a new school in mm. an area. And what we're finding, actually, is schools are being set up in areas where places are needed, but also they're providing fantastic uh, but educational why haven't you managed to sell the case? Why haven't you managed to convince the public about them? Why are you only doing this now? Well, I think it's partly because sometimes we talk about these, these structures. Actually, what we won't be talking about, and I suspect all candidates on the doorstep, all Conservative Party candidates, are talking about what we have done to raise the attainment of our young people in this country. All right. As I say, I mean, even the Prime more... Minister had to admit that free schools, quote, are not often understood. Well, I, That's I... a failure, isn't it? I think it's not a failure of the policy, it's a failure uh, sometimes... Of your ability to sell it. Well, it's we have to explain why we are doing what we're doing. All okay. politicians have to do that. That's the whole point of our okay. election campaign. Tristram Hunt, Hunt just, you... Sorry. I yes. If I could come in on this. Of course, all right. One of the concerns with free schools is that there should be ways in which people can get involved uh, in education, and there always have. There have been traditional ways in which you can do that, school governors or charitable trusts. And I think the thing about free schools is it looks like people who are saying, I want to come in and get involved in education, but not work with other people. And I think it's that sense in which too often it's seen that people are, put, uh, are wanting to go off on their own and set something up rather than working with what's but there already. The free schools do give a good idea, that the idea of innovation in education to, to give different types of schools I've got no problem with that idea, and I think Nikki uh, is absolutely right to, to, to want that in principle. The problem has been putting that into practice, where they've become little more than uh, a, a, another, another way of, of bringing in the same old, same old, and they haven't got that kind of innovation that we desperately need in our education. Different types of schools. It isn't the case, because 17% of free schools, for example, uh, deal with special needs or turn to provision. That's children who need additional help. Oh. Actually, what they're doing is they are raising standards. I would challenge any of the panel to go and visit a school like the Fulham Boys School or the Seek Free School in Leicester. They are full of dedicated professionals oh. who are doing brilliant, brilliant work for the children in them. Many of the free right. schools are excellent, but they do rely upon the quality of leadership and governance. And I think well, isn't the, that true of think, I think one of the problems schools don't depend on that. One of the, one of the, one of the that. problems that we've had in the English educational debate is a fixation on nameplates when actually what matters is more concentration David, in all David, schools, this, this whether they're local David, authority David, or not, or David, quality. This and then and then and David, David, coming in. David, this is your record, and the Liberal Democrats can't yes, run away I'm from very, this. And I'm very you, proud of it. You voted for unqualified teachers in our school. Ah, we you not, voted we for the free actually. schools program. You haven't focused on the most important elements in education, which is the quality of teaching and the strength of leadership. We've and instead, you and college. the Conservative Party have obsessed about structural reform and not focused on what well, really me, matters, which is why the Labour Party okay. is committed to having since qualified that's... teachers and in we'll our come on having professional I understand that, and we'll come to that in a minute. Head teachers. Da David Laws, respond. Let me make two points. First is, we in government, partly because of Liberal Democrat influence, have actually taken forward the idea of a Royal College of Teaching, which is going to lead to better professional development for teachers in the future. And on this issue of qualified teachers, I actually believe that all teachers should be qualified. Well, Michael, why haven't you Michael Burke it in made government? that change in government without agreement. He was able to do so because the last Labour government passed legislation this that enabled that. Though. But actually, the number of qualified and right. un unqualified. All right, let me come to Tristram Hunt now, as it was under Labour. Let me come to Tristram Hunt on that because you've complained about the rise in unqualified teachers. You said that a Labour government would get rid of them all. But if they're so bad, why do some of the best performing schools in the country perform them, uh, employ them? What we've said is that we want all teachers to be qualified or working towards qualified teacher status. And that's both a sign of the respect we attach to okay. teachers. We think it is a demanding, fulfilling profession. We don't think, unlike the Conservatives and the Liberals, that anyone can just turn up and be a teacher. Actually, you need training, you need qualification. I you understand need to get the, the best case. What I asked people. you was, why do some of the best performing schools in the countries employ what you regard what, what as unqualified you, teachers? I don't know what you're referring to. Well, you don't think they do? I don't, know, I don't know which schools you're referring to. There are to many when schools that, that employ them, including the school you went to. Well, what we're saying is that whether it's in the independent sector, where the vast majority uh, of teachers are qualified, around 90%, um, or whether it's in the state sector, we think, as a sign and symbol of the respect we give to teachers, and because 
particularly for children from disadvantaged communities, the best thing that can happen for their education is to come in front of a great quality teacher. So it's not just about QTS. That's just a license to teach. QTS. is qualified teacher status. Thank you. What it is, is year on year, the professional development and the support for the professional development of teachers. Okay. And that's why, on a cross-party basis, we support the College of Teaching. Yeah. We think uh, that's a, we think that's a good Bra idea. Bramwin uh, Jeffries, let me bring Bramwin in Mr. here. Mr Hunt, you're saying that you would say to head teachers in some of those very deprived communities who are struggling to recruit teachers right now that they couldn't bring in someone who was bright, who was a graduate, who could bring in experience maybe from industry, perhaps from uh, working in a shortage area like science or maths. Are you saying they really shouldn't be using those people now? No, of course they should bring them in. So what's, and then what's wrong up, with recruiting let, them in the future let, if they let, desperately need teachers in those areas? Of course they should bring them in and then put them on a pathway towards qualified teacher status. And the reason why we've got such a teacher recruitment crisis is because the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats have talked down the teaching profession for the last four years. Years. The blob, right. enemies Mr. of Mr. promise, the workload that's oh. hit them. This is why, and you're absolutely right, Bram, across the country, we have this terrifying prospect of not getting great quality teachers to well, underperforming areas. And this is, this is, is as a, this is as a result the of the kind of Let Bram just have a follow up, then I'll come the, to you. The assault we've seen on teaching from this okay. government over the okay, last Okay, you've made that point, just, Bram. Just on numbers, yeah. if you look at the numbers, there were just as many unqualified teachers under Labour. Only slightly more, but... 700 more. You know, but just so, so 700 more, but there, there was, if but you what, look back but, over but a Bremen, decade... what was the difference? The difference was that they were on a pathway towards qualified teachers. There is status. absolutely no difference in the And that is the crucial difference. That's not the That case. is the absolutely is crucial difference. And under the next Labour government, look, we want great people to become teachers. We want the physicists, the musicians, uh, the drama teachers, the out-of-work journalists uh, to be able to come to Why be... Why are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> to come to be teachers. But we also right. want them to gain qualified teacher this status. Rob, let me ask you this. in the power okay, and you symbolism made, of right, teaching. Right, you made that point. What evidence can you provide us that shows that unqualified, as you regard them, unqualified teachers perform poorly in the classroom? Well, right around the world, the most high-performing education systems, Singapore, Finland, put huge amounts of effort into the quality yeah. and the qualification but, of professional but what development what evidence of can you give teachers. us in this country so that what you regard as unqualified teachers are performing poorly? So there's international evidence that having a highly motivated, highly qualified teaching cohort produces better results. And we also think... What about this country? What's the evidence what? from this country? We have what you regard as unqualified teachers. What academic research uh, can you provide that shows that they perform poorly in the classroom? We know that having qualified teachers, and that's just the beginning, and then the professional development of teachers is much better for the results of young people. Now, you will always be able to find a brilliant teacher. What's the research? A, hold on. You will always be able to find a brilliant teacher in a highly selective school with excellent subject knowledge. But I'm talking about the vast majority of schools in Britain. And we take the view right. that teaching is one of the most important elements, one of the most important right. professions. Okay. I, and I, we think... I, I know what you think. I just wanted to be, know. I just wanted the evidence that backs it up. But I haven't. There's international I, evidence. I haven't had, international. had that. Now, Nikki Morgan, you're demonising teachers. You 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 make it that people don't want to come into teaching because of your attitude. Well, What's the answer? It, it's absolutely not the case. Uh, we re absolutely respect uh, professional, hardworking, dedicated teachers. I meet many of them at schools up and down the country. Uh, as Brownwin, I think, was hinting at, only 3% of the profession or those teaching don't have uh, qualified teacher status. But you asked about evidence. The evidence is that we have a million more children in schools rated good or outstanding. With Ofsted show we've got more teaching that is good or outstanding than we had in 2010. We have, as David said, uh, May plans to have a college of teaching. Christian can't have it both ways. He can't both attack education and the profession All and right. then talk can about I what he wants to. But, okay, the, no. but the question he has to answer is, is the first thing he would do as Education Secretary ask, tell 17,000 people that they cannot teach in our schools in this country? He would not do that. Well, I, br I want to bring in the Greens and UK, but briefly exams. just can we answer that? I know you wouldn't do what Nicky Morgan suggested, but you would say that unqualified teachers should start getting a teaching qualification, correct? Absolutely. And if they and refuse to do so, would they then lose their jobs? Well, at the end of a parliament, if you're not uh, qualified or working towards qualified teacher status, we don't think that you've shown so the enthusiasm and the respect to your So you should lose you, your job? Yeah, you don't the deserve answer, to be in the classroom. If you're, if so, you're, so you should lose your job? If, you're, if over the course of the parliament, you're not either qualified or working towards qualified teacher status, if you're not on a pathway yeah. towards yeah. it, 
we don't think you should be in the classroom because okay. you've got to be so qualified. So you would fire, you would yeah, fire them? You've got to be improving. You would fire them? Yes, because we need okay, high quality you. teaching. I, in no, I need to move on. In this, there are more than three parties here. I want to move on to you, Kip. Jonathan Arnott, your party is to ensure a grammar school in every town. Can you explain how you would do that? Would they be new build grammar schools or would you convert existing schools into grammar schools? We're talking about a lot more than just grammar schools, of no, course. No, but answer here, but that particular you know, point. Yeah, um, we are talking basically about converting existing schools into grammar schools over a period of time, yes. And of course, Can you just all explain the types how that of schools as well, talking about vo vocational and, and technical schools. So you would identify a school and you say, right, this one is a grammar school. What would happen to the children going there at the moment? Look, of course, something like that has to be done over a period of time right. with a new cohort. It's something that would take a few years to, um, to go... But to what go would happen the, the, to the, the children system. currently you know, going to the school is, that you've designated as a grammar school? As I said, it would only apply to a new cohort. It's not something, of course, that you could, that you could bring in and, uh, and, and move children from one school to another. But this schools have converted. Schools have converted from one kind of school to another kind of school many, many times in the past. And, 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 and frankly... There are now, frankly, we're not backwards. talking about anything that's new. There we're not talking right. about rocket backwards. science here. It's not doesn't respect the, the outstanding schools that we see up and down the country. What we want is every school to be a good or excellent local school. All right. It is of also course, not and, and, to and, to, and in order, and in order to, to, to make sure that you've got that, we want different kinds of schools. We want more parental choice. And one of but those totally ways of doing things is to have something which is aimed at those children totally who flourish in an academic environment. All right. Just like you want some schools you got to finish in a vocational environment or in a technical environment, what we want is an education system that meets the needs of all different types of, all right. of, of children. You've said that, but I want to. No, 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 I've got to be fair. We've got to have to hear from the Greens now uh, as well. And I want to ask you this: Your manifesto wants to phase out private schools altogether. Could you name a single democratic country that bans parents from sending their kids to private schools? Uh, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is to take the charitable status away from private schools. But and you also like want them to, to join the state system. We you, do want want to to the system. you want to absorb them Absolutely. into the state yes. system. There are many excellent private schools, and we would like that resource for this country to be available to all, not and, on the mean, on ability refuse. to pay. If a school wants to continue without charitable status to offer private education, that's fine. It would be regrettable, um, but they would be but free so to do that. So we'd continue. Or, or, so private schools could continue they but without continue, charitable yes. status? Yes. If they didn't want... OK, that's You've clear enough. You've not posted what, the change it, in your manifesto, what, have you? What, what, uh, what about... What how about much what, money would it cost? Um, no, can I what, take your what point about, first? What about all the church-run schools? There are thousands of, of schools in yes. this country run by the Church of England, the Catholic Church, other mm -hmm. organisations, you also think public money should be taken away from those schools, which are supported by millions of parents. We're not saying to take the money away in a sense of saying, you know, we would just grab it. What we're saying is we would want faith schools to have an admissions policy and to integrate into the rest of the community education system. So if a school continues to have a, a relationship with a faith, uh, that's fine. In the same way that when grammar schools come in, they could continue to offer some of the elements of a grammar school traditional education, the same ethos and so forth. But what's crucial is about access to these schools. If people are prevented from going to a school, it is divisive in communities. But you that's don't, what we want you to don't, tackle. You don't think churches should be running schools. Fundamentally, you do not think religious organisations should be running schools. Because what we've seen is that the admissions criteria or the, if you might say, atmosphere as to whether people want to go to those schools or not becomes very divisive within communities. So no Church of England schools? We're not saying no Church of England schools or no church involvement well, or no faith did. involvement. What we're saying is that, that faiths should not run schools right, so in no, such a way... No, church of it, no, no Muslim schools? In such a way... No Jewish schools? ...as to have Correct. single faith education. Right. Because so, it's divisive. so you were getting rid of all that? Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, sorry, uh, within, the, within the state system. Oh, I, I understand that. Hmm. Well, at least that's a clarification. Nicky Morgan and Tristram Hunt and David Lodz, uh, all three of you here, uh, you, you either want to run uh, our, or, or to run our state school system. So what does it say about British education that all three of you went to fee-paying schools? Well, I don't want to run the education system. I want to devolve that power down to directors of school still, standards. But it was still report to you. Now, what, why what? is it that all three of you who want to be the education secretary here and are most likely to be... Uh, of, the, of the five of you here, it's you three, one of you will probably get the job, that you all went to private schools and then to Oxbridge. Well, I think there's been a tightening of the circle uh, across many professions, journalism, law, uh, medicine, and 
the, the key and that element continued is under Labour. architecture. The, the, the key element is, is how do you widen social mobility? And when it comes yeah. to private schools, what we in the Labour Party are saying is that we would remove their business rate relief unless they collaborated and partnered with other schools. I think the private sector actually has a lot to learn from state schools. The teaching in state schools, when you strip out selection, is actually better. So your, so ans your ways, answer to are, social are, mobility is to take away business rate relief? Is no, that our, answer, our answer to social mobility is to invest in early years because that's where you challenge okay. inequality. And under this government, we've seen 750 Sure Start Children's mm -hmm. Centres closed. All right, we David have Laws, what do you we say have to seen that? inequality well, I, rise under right, this government. Let me hear from David point, Laws. I agree with the point you're making. Sadly, too many of the professions in this country have dis a disproportionate number of people from the private school system. And that is a reflection of the fact that in our society, we may think of ourselves as a meritocracy where people are judged on merit. But the chances of acquiring qualifications and merit are still hideously unequal. We still have almost two-thirds of young people from disadvantaged backgrounds who don't even get the five uh, C-grade benchmark. No, we know, we know the problem. And that's why the, big, the, the biggest and most powerful policy that we've introduced in this area in this parliament has been the Lib Dem policy of the people premium. That right. is rapidly okay. closing the disadvantaged Well, you've mentioned that. Is there the any area. evidence of that, Bramwell? Yes, no, there is. There isn't. Well, well, your name is not Bramwell. <laughs> 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 Funnily enough. Uh, there is there is na there is some evidence of some narrowing, particularly at key stage two. But it's very hard to pull out just one just one result, and we'll have to see what follows through to those yeah. children. But the key question, both for Nicky Morgan and for Tristram Hunt, is: Would you support the pupil premium through the next the next Parliament? Is that part of your your yes. funding plan? Yes, it, it you would is. all the way through. You would fund it. We Tristram mentioned Hunt. Would you not fund in it? real terms. Not in real terms. Well, Tristram Hunt. Would you would you protect the pupil premium in future? Well, Bremen, the attainment gap is widening. Uh, under this government, uh, the gap between children on free school meals. You're not answering. You're not answering. I'll tell you the reasoning behind it. The gap between children on free school meals and non-free school meals, according to the Nuffield Foundation and the Demos think tank, is widening Tristan, under this government. So, so, this so that's a no. You wouldn't keep the pupil premium. We would keep the pupil premium, but we think more needs to be done with it because the gap is widening at the moment. So it's not working as effectively. Well, it's such a good idea. You would keep. There's, a, there's an interesting philosophical We've point here that support. about how children who, whose parents are not working quite rightly re receive support in terms of pupil premium, but parents who are working, they're working two jobs, they're the working poor, they're often not getting the pupil premium support. And I'm hearing from a lot of head teachers that the way in which the pupil premium is sometimes managed in our schools is actually creating the wrong signals uh, for those families. So we need to think very carefully about how pupil premium... All right, Tristan, Roman, let me put this point. We will keep you, it. You, you, you've point. said there the thing that attainment's getting worse under this government. But under Labour, one in three pupils left primary school having failed to reach a decent level in reading, writing and maths. It's now down to one in five. And what was so the, it's and better what, than under you. So why is attainment worse? And what, was the, what were the figures when we took government? Well, that's not the relevant. I'm well, talking about well, one no, in three. Because I think, I think it was one in three well, under you. It's now one in five. It's got but better. I, but uh, look, uh, we and have to think... Come back with, well, well, I'm answer. I have 13 right. years in power. We have to think about what we inherited in the mid-90s, and the schools, thanks to the Tories, were in a terrible state. No, and no, Labour invested... You hold didn't, on, no, hold on, you didn't just... prove it. I'm not arguing you okay. didn't prove it. No. But it was still well, one it... in three. It's now only one in five. And, and Four that... out of five yeah. get decent ability to read, write, math. So in what way have things got worse, which you just claimed? The attainment gap is widening between children on free school meals Trish. and non-free school dear meals. Dear dear all right, David Laws, what's, the, what's your reply to that? No, no, you've said David Laws. Continues to repeat this. It is untrue. The chief inspector has said that the gap is narrowing both at key stage two and key stage four. Nobody in the world thinks it's widening at key stage two. And to the extent that key stage four, this is the end of uh, 16. That's the, that's the figures I was quoting. To the extent that that has not narrowed as much as we would want, it's because actually we've had to get rid of some of the qualifications oh. introduced by Labour, which were not giving a real picture of the true improvement of the education system and we're, we're incentivizing many youngsters from poor backgrounds to do subjects okay. of qualifications. Just, we need to, no, we need to stop there understand. because I'm moving on. Promises from 97. Right, we're Come moving on. on. We've done a lot on schools. We could spend all day. I would like to, but we haven't got the permission of the scheduler on BBC to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to childcare because uh, all of you have been making some pretty bold commitments about providing childcare for families. It is a big issue uh, for families. So let's just look at it. Nikki Morgan, why is what you're promising better than the others? 
because we are promising uh, an additional 15 hours, which takes up to 30 hours for uh, working parents. But that builds on the achievements of the last parliament, where we had extended the hours available already for three and four years, all three and four year olds two-year-olds from disadvantaged families, but also spending more money uh, in terms of early years. We're spending a billion pounds more in the last parliament on early years and childcare. We're also going to introduce tax-free childcare, which is going to bring real flexibility for parents with children up to the age of 12 and actually up to the age of 17 for those with children who are disabled. Bradman, how does that stack up? Where are you going to get these, these free places from? Nursery providers are already saying that they are subsidising from paying parents to meet the cost because they have had so little extra per child. Kent is raising the amount per child by 1p next year. Now, if that kind of rate of increase goes on, how many nursery providers do you think are going to say, I will offer 30 hours and I can make my sums add up and I can run my business? Well, what we announced yesterday, uh, supported by the National Day Nurseries Association, was a review working with them on the hourly funding. We're going to uprate the hourly funding, but also look at the whole funding formula because we also know that we give money to local authorities and top slices. So you don't yet know if you can pay for it? We really? absolutely can pay for it. We've already um, earmarked £350 million pounds from the uh, taking a pension relief from those on £150,000, but we're earning £150,000. But we have also, in the but last haven't parliament, you spent that in other places. No, we, 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 that's divided between oh. the inheritance tax <laughs> and also childcare. Oh, really? So you slipped in childcare as well as inheritance tax? Well, we're going to raise £1.4 million and yeah. £350 million. Have you had this independently yeah. audited? This is the money tree. It's, yeah, it's, it's, right. it's not the money tree. You want to talk about money tree, David? Look at the Liberal Democrats, Democrats and we can look at the Labour. All right, David Loss. Andrew, there are two big differences between our position on this and particularly the Conservative Party. The first is that we're saying we will protect the real budget for the early years. The Conservatives are saying that would be an unprotected departmental area. The Institute for Fiscal Studies are saying that means 15% cuts. So goodness knows how the Tories can fund this. But the second big difference, and it's a difference both with Nikki and with Tristram, is this, that we want to improve and have a universal offer, the same amount of hours for all youngsters who are two, three and four. And we would expand the two-year-old offer in the next parliament. Both Trisham and Nikki are saying something that I find pretty extraordinary when we come back to this issue of social mobility. They're saying that they would give uh, considerably more hours of early years education to young people from more advantaged backgrounds where the parents are working, and that for a youngster who happens to be in a home where the parent may genuinely not be able to work because of a disability or mental health problem, they essentially will be sent home halfway through the early years day. And those youngsters from more advantaged backgrounds, including the backgrounds of investment bankers, can stay for life. Okay, well, quick I think that quick that response, enough. and then I want David to come to Tristan. Account of is that there will be families receiving help via universal credit for childcare costs, up to 85% as well. But yeah, also, but that our childcare offer uh, extends to working parents who could only be working eight hours on a national minimum wage that's earning £52 a week. And I think we've seen over the course of the last five years that the best way to help people is to help them to get a job. It'll that gets them out of poverty. Well. And it, if we really it want it to help Tristram Hunt, like, what's the Labour pitch on this? Well, we believe in supporting working families and we believe well, in supporting does. working parents and that's why we will offer 25 hours free childcare a week for three and four year olds of working parents and we're going to pay for that fully costed unlike the conservatives uh, from the bank levy transfer so that means times. that our booming Sorry, banks Nikki, have you seen the bank levy has been spent 10 times already Tristan. No, there's a difference between the banker's bonus tax uh, and the bank levy so these are two different what's streams. the difference the, the difference is one is going to pay uh, for the no, jobs but what's guarantee. The between well, the two it, taxes? it is a levy on bank transfers, and the other is a tax on bankers' bonuses. So uh -huh. the, the particular income uh, levy that you on have bank from bankers. Transfers. Transfers. No, no, no. It's a so this is a jobs guarantee so, that's so, gone from two no, years no, no, to no, no. a year to six months so to three months. Is, so the point behind this is that having two working parents in a family is a really important way mm. of combating child poverty. Uh. But where we agree with the Liberal Democrats is that. If you want to battle inequality, if you want to battle disadvantage, you begin in the early well, years. And that's why, and that's why we support the early years funding element of the Department for Education budget. But you're going to and give it's disadvantaged shocking, youngsters it's shocking less that early the years Conservative education. Party wants to cut that early years investment because if you want to battle but disadvantage, yeah. that's where you all do right. aren't, you, aren't, aren't, you, aren't, aren't you all making a fundamental assumption, which is that parents of very young children absolutely want to go out to work. Some there will be some people there right. will be some yeah. people who some don't do want to go don't. out to work 
and you're not offering anything to them. Well, they've got, the, offering all sorts, us, they've got the married couples uh, tax allowance, but also, of course, um, there is uh, help you know, in terms of uh, uh, income tax, raising income tax threshold for the partner who is working, uh, which also brings more money uh, into the house. And so that's I think right they should have it, Jim. But they've got plenty of other things to spend on. Let me come, who is, who is trying okay. to let, let me come to you, UKIP and the Greens uh, on this, because it's interesting, mm. UKIP, you haven't made any pledges to extend, extend childcare. Why is that? The pledge that we have made, of course, uh, in in this election is that we'll make sure that all primary schools are open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and able to provide childcare outside of the current normal school hours, providing that childcare support in schools and making sure that children have a free breakfast. So who's, who's going to pay for that and have you costed it? Where's that money coming from? Yeah, I, I'd say our manifesto so, is the only so where, party's so, manifesto so where out, is, of, out, of all, out of all these parties, so where is which that money? is independently costed so by the Senate. So where is it? What's the, the, what's the number? So, no, the, the point on this is that actually you this, don't is, know not, how much this is not cost. this is not a policy which should which should be costing money because this is this is childcare provision. This, this is already available in the system. And all, all we are saying here is that um, is that if we facilitate that childcare to be provided through the current voucher systems at school, that makes a massive. All right, let me come on to the let me come on to the Greens uh, because you're almost at the other extreme. You or from UKIP, they don't seem to be promising. Perhaps realistically, not too much. You, on the other hand, you're offering free childcare from birth to seven years. What are you going to set up? kind of green re-education camps for this? No, this is about using and building on what's already there, but it's about establishing a situation in which people know there's good quality childcare that doesn't require this endless complexity of vouchers and... It, I mean, I must say, it does seem very... It does, I mean, when I listen to the three main... Absolutely baffling, It does it? seem very complex. Yes, and we're saying... 15 hour, if I can... 15 hour offer for two... Let, 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 yes, but this week... Is it 15 hours here? Is it 16 next week? Yeah. That, what we're saying is that that should be available for all because this is the single way that is going to be most effective of dealing with disadvantage in this country. All right. All but the you experts say would in your say manifesto you're going to spend 23.4 billion pounds a year extra on education. Absolutely. And you haven't funded that. Of course it's we have. It's an absolute but nonsense. No, if, if, if you want me economic... to say where it comes from, I'm very happy to do so because well, it's no, a very no doubt. rich You've got the economic country. Where we can be taxed more. No doubt it will come from and the wealth tax. tax. It will not tax only come from the rest. It actually costs the country. It will not, o right. it will not only come but from the wealth. But this is an important point because what we're presented here is four views that this country should be run on the shoestring. We're saying we're a wealthy country and if we want to invest in public services, the money is okay. there. Well, All right, but no, I want to have some quick fire questions. Uh, on this, and, and if anyone doesn't know the meaning of quickfire <laughs> response, I'm happy to tell you. Uh, what age should sex education be taught, Nikki Morgan? I think right the way through from primary school and age appropriate way. Age appropriate doesn't give me an age. What's an age? Give well, me. Uh, primary schools, many of them start <coughs> with uh, families and relationships, but we make it compulsory for maintained schools, secondary maintained schools. What age? From 11. David well, at the moment, it's from seven in uh, oh. state-maintained schools. So we've just raised it. Uh, but only in terms of relationships. Yeah. What we shouldn't be doing is telling very young children about you so know, what age? intimate matters of sex. We should keep the seven age, and we should do something that Nikki okay. hasn't been prepared to do in government, another thing we've disagreed on, which is to extend that uh, okay. age-appropriate sex Remem relationship right. education. Remember, quick all fire, I just wanted just an age. Academies. James Humphreys. Well, we should, we should start education at seven. Uh, it, sex education. Uh, education about social and personal issues. The, the sex education, I think, should be brought in uh, at the judgment of teachers because in all of this, oh, so we've heard very little. School to school. It may well vary from school. All right, to school, that's absolutely. an answer. Let me move on. Jonathan Arnold. Formal se sex education <coughs> should start at the age of 11, but before that, of course, it's reasonable to teach about reproduction in science classes, about, uh, right. about in internet no. safety and that you kind of thing. Give me an age, Tristram Hunt. Uh, the Labour Party is committed to statutory sex and relationship education. I think teaching uh, children in primary school about the importance of marriage and stable family relationships is entirely appropriate. Okay. We are going to Except. consult on the new curriculum. Uh, we will consult with professionals on the new curriculum. Okay. Unlike this government, we listen to the profession. Is there enough discipline in British schools, David Laws? Yes, in the vast majority, there is oh. enough discipline, okay. and where you have good head teachers, Just you remind. get that good discipline. Uh, I think Sir Michael Wilshaw has, has highlighted the issue of low-level disruption, and one of the reasons, to go back to an earlier record, of the importance of having qualified teachers to be able to control a class, have discipline right. and attentiveness in a class, so there's so, always improvement. So is the answer yes or no? There's always improvement to be made in discipline. No, uh, but is that a yes or a no? 
I, do you know I've actually forgotten your original question? Really? <laughs> I think it's not that. <laughs> well, in, in, that, in that case, you can go to the back of the class. Oh, yes. But I'll ask it again. Is well, there, what bit of is there enough discipline in British schools you don't understand? Well, I, I prefer the word attentiveness rather than mm. discipline. I like classes <laughs> for having full not, attention. Okay, I know when to, to give up, and the definition of quick fire will be sent to you after this program. <laughs> Jonathan Arnott. No, we need to have better behaviour management to, in our schools and, okay. and support for teachers because That's at the moment it's one of the two leading causes of teachers yeah. quitting the profession. Oh, right. And James Humphreys. I, I think there is, but what we do also need to do is help teachers to be able to teach in a more interesting and engaging way uh, mm -hmm. and that means tackling issues like Ofsted, which we haven't yet mentioned. Very well, and you just have. Would you like we me to answer that one? No. Uh, <laughs> because I want a one-word answer from you all in the following. Is it acceptable for an education secretary to send their children to a private school? Yes or no, Tristram Hunt? Yes, in certain circumstances. No, I mean, yes, we'll do. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, David Laws. Yes. They should do what's right for the child. No, yes or no? They should do what's right for the child. So that's a yes. If they thought it was a private school, yes, that would be a yes. Yes, if they thought that was, it was right for the child. So it's a yes. It's yes if they think it's right for the child. Very well. Yeah, I'd go with that. You would? Mm -hmm. It's acceptable. What a sad indictment on the state okay. of the country if you feel the need to do that and you're the educator. No, that's expert. good. That's, look, five yeses. I know when to quit when I'm ahead. <laughs> Actually getting a straightforward answer. It's quite an achievement. You have to go and lie in a dark room after this. Uh, David Laws, you've attacked Labour's plan to cut tuition fees to 6,000. Do you pledge to keep them at 9,000 if you go into coalition with Labour? Well, our plans in our manifesto are based upon the existing level of fees. We said we'd have a review a couple of years into the Parliament. But we don't think that Labour's plan makes sense. Um, I refer people to the Institute for Fiscal Studies analysis of the Labour plan, which shows that all of the beneficiaries would be the most well-off graduates. The bottom 50% wouldn't gain anything, and in the view of the IFS, it would make no difference to participation. Okay, there's a certain irony, isn't there, in a, a party which had promised to abolish tuition fees altogether, now sort of fighting to keep them at 9,000? We're not fighting to keep them, Andrew, but we've had two interesting discussions earlier on today about the importance of investment in the early mm. years and the pupil premium. And the truth is that if you want to make, in, in an era where, of austerity, where we're still having to make cuts, the biggest difference to education, the earlier you can invest, the more difference that makes. So young, you'd rather the money young, went there? Yes. Young people All go right. on to education when they get the right skills at 16. Okay, if Nick, they don't, no system can save them. Uh, Nicky Morgan, do you rule out lifting the current £9,000 cap in the next parliament? The Conservative Party is very happy with the level that it's at, um, and it's bringing money into universities. I yep. think it's, it's good for students. So you rule out raising the, the current care. cap of 9000 Well, we're, we're very happy with the level. Well, it's you not something have, I'm happy about lots of things, but I would like some more. It's not Do you rule it out? We're not something we're looking at at all. Not looking at. So you could still do it? It's not our policy. It's not our policy. I mean, wh wh why would we want to raise it? It's working. I don't know. You it's tell working. me. It's working. Well, uh, we wouldn't want to raise it because so it's So you working. wouldn't raise it? What it's bringing in is more money into universities. Uh, students are getting financial support and only paying it back, obviously, when they're earning over £21,000. Okay. And it's good for it's adding up Brown. for the taxpayer, too. So you mentioned the financial stresses. Isn't the reality that for families, the real pressure is in meeting the costs of rent, of food, of books, of travel for their children. And none of you are offering anything to help families with that. And it is those hard-working families that you, you all talk about I think we've committed uh, to look often. The, we have committed to look at the, uh, the maintenance loan. I think as, I, as a Member of Parliament representing a large university, I would agree that actually those are the issues. And that one of the things we making it clear to students that they're not having to pay the tuition fees, but there is help available. And I think... Can you I ask... Can I ask... Can I raise the bursaries fund in order to pay for his career I'm not talking. I'm not talking about bursaries. Well, I'm talking about difference to people I'm, paying but I, and I'm talking about I'm university. talking about ordinary families who are having to find a lot of money up front to pay for their children to go to university to pay for them to fulfill but their the bursaries own, that universities offer are very important but they offer they go to the lowest income families we're talking about people where you might have two parents in work still really struggling to meet the thousands of pounds but isn't they've the got they've got to find so what are you, okay. what are you offering to them but are the you other, going to the other point the actually I'll come to you in a minute Tristram the, the other issue I, I mean I, I absolutely understand because the conversations I have with my own constituents about that there is uh, help available and of course people are going to go on to be graduates they but not, a, not if you 
let me just not say, if, the not other if you, point... Not if you earn more than £42,000, both parents together. Which is a lot. That, yeah. that, that, particularly two, outside two, the South East. Two, two, that, that two families. families. That household. But the other point is, is the alternatives. We have seen under this government two million more apprenticeships. Uh, and that is giving a real alternative to earn while you are learning. It's absolutely revolutionary for many students in this oh. country for whom university might not be the right thing or it might be a decision but, they but take to, they to study the later FE on. So, so a 10 percent the institute for the institute for fiscal studies says there's been a 10 percent reduction in spending on further education uh, colleges now that is a lot of people's children who are aged 16 to 19 and basically you have decided to spend less on their children than you have on someone whose child is going well, to have a, a sixth form in a school is that are you simply you valuing the, well, different children bang, bang goes the social mobility well, absolutely. Well, we had you had the economy debate yesterday, so I'm not going to rehearse that. The difficult decisions that we have taken over the course of the okay. past five years, but we have invested more in early years and at the start of primary schools because that's where the difference is really made yep. in people's edu educational attainment right the way to the system. Briefly. But we have okay. also put more money into apprenticeships, 400 million pounds. So FE colleges. I was at one in Oxfordshire earlier this week, and they were talking about the money, uh, the, the, the the attention they are now this giving. But, but a lot, a lot the and that is a huge the funding. It is making a huge difference. Well, right. We have had to make some very... All right, no, that, I'm just finding out that you have Tristram Hunt, and then I come to David Laws, because you may want to respond to him. Okay. Uh, even though tuition fees went up to 9,000, to many people's surprise, it actually didn't deter kids from poorer backgrounds going to university. Indeed, the percentage uh, has risen. Uh, so would it not be more sensible if there's any money around not to cut tuition fees back to 6,000 uh, because you don't pay these fees until after you leave university anyway. You don't pay them back and if you don't earn a lot of money you probably will never pay them back. But as Bramman was saying, what really deters poorer students from going is the cost of being at university. If there's any money around, shouldn't you be putting it into the maintenance of living at university for the poorer students? You're absolutely right and that's why the Labour Party has plans to increase the maintenance grant by £400, Bramman. So we do Four, have... £400 we do, pounds we for families have, who are paying we, thousands. We, we, we do have plans to support those people going to university. But we also think that thanks to the grotesque misleading of the British people by the Liberal Democrats at the last election. We went from having uh, a tuition yes, fee right, system which was one of the lowest in the world to almost overnight one of the highest. And we are concerned that that's putting off young people from Stoke-on-Trent, from other parts of the country, from non-traditional university backgrounds going into university. So it's great that more young people from disadvantaged backgrounds are going into university, okay. but the Labour Party's yeah. ambitious, and we want to see even more go. All right, David Laws, I promise I'll come, come back, back to you. I'll come back on two points. Firstly, on Tristram making this party political point about uh, tuition fees. Well, you misled the we British had, public. We, we at least had the explanation. The public. Hold on, let him answer. We at least had the explanation that we were in a coalition where the other coalition party and Labour, incidentally, didn't agree with our policy. The Labour Party, let me gently remind you, Tristram, let down voters twice in the past by breaking a pledge not to introduce tuition fees and then by tripling them having said that they wouldn't increase them further. So I'm not taking any lessons from you. On the, coming back to the issue about 16 to 19 education, this is a really important area. We've not been able to protect it under this coalition government. It now has come to the point where uh, 16 to 19 education providers are finding it very difficult. That is why we have made a pledge to protect 16 to 19 funding throughout the next parliament. It's another area where the Conservatives are saying it'll be unprotected All right. and there will be massive cuts Only and that is another big off. difference. Let me come to the Greens. No, and no, no it's not. It's actually the whole parliament. No, it's the not. whole parliament. It's not. I can, well, I can see, it's see this. Our I can see this coalition was going well in the final <laughs> days here. Uh, <laughs> let, let me come to the Greens. On the Greens, now, you, you're promising, you're posting that you would cancel uh, tuition fees and you would also cancel all the outstanding student debt. How much would that cost? Uh, the, the cost on, on uh, tuition fees, for example, would be 4.5 billion uh, in year five of the parliament. Now, okay, there's an indra of breath. What this is a lot of money. But again, it comes back. What it, about the student debt? Well, the student debt. We, if we, anyone thinks we're going to see very much of that money again, uh, and you think of what all the costs of over. Well, we are going to see quite a lot of it again. Well, a very I large think. Proportion I, of it. I think you'll see the, the collection of, of the student loan portfolio is looking more... So, that, more it, it, so it's a, it brings in around about £2 billion a year. 
Uh, so yes. you're going to cancel the fees. You get no yep. income from that. You'd have to top up university uh, funding. Yes. You then have to make up for the loss of the student fees being yep. paid back. Yes. I mean, you re I mean, you're green because you do believe in magic money trees, don't it you? It is not magic money tree to a say magic, that. Oh, magic can money you forest. just let me speak for once, please? <laughs> it's not a magic money <laughs> tree them. if you're talking about bringing the GDP expenditure of, in the government sector, the amount we spend on public services, up to the level of Germany. That yes. is I'm not. Just not quite that sure is not the economics of madness. I'm, that is about saying okay. these the, the the people in this country deserve to have that investment right. in public services. The right. money is there. We are the seventh well, richest country in the world. Well, May I offer a point? Well, actually, we're the fifth richest yeah. now. So I'll just bring Ooh, you up to date. Yes, so you could you. probably afford to do even more with that money tree. <laughs> Jonathan Arnott, you, UKIP says that students taking the STEM subjects, which are the things that we still have a lot of ground to make up on: science, technology, engineering, maths, medicine. They wouldn't have to repay the tuition fees you say but uh, why don't you value historians or geographers or linguists that we need or even dare i say it uh, economists let me let me start by explaining where we're coming from on this we've at the moment got 47 percent of graduates doing jobs which don't actually require a degree we've got 44,000 pound average debt on leaving university. We're not necessarily training in this system the skills that we actually need. So what UKIP is saying is we'd love to be able to be in a position to have that magic money tree, that 23.4 billion pounds a year that the Greens uh, seem to think they can fund, but we're not. And so we, you've got to start somewhere. And you start with the skills that we need to make Great Britain a modern world leader in education. That's starting with the STEM subjects. And I think we're absolutely right to start there. But yes, we'd love to be able to do more. But sadly, the financial situation that has been caused by all the establishment parties uh, 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 on, in okay. this debate. But, but just on that, the Bank of England estimates that quantitative easing, that single policy, put over £100 billion of money into the richest 5% of this country. £100 billion. Because it now, pumped up the asset values, values of, of and people and already had assets. Exactly. Now, with that sort of money, uh, talking about a wealth tax is not a money tree. It's but simply James, saying the money has gone in. We'd like to... They earn. And well, if, you've no, a a if you've got a 60% uh, top rate Hold of income tax, scrap the upper think, earnings limit on national yeah, I think we've just... It's an annual wealth tax. It's if you've got a doctor earning two hundred thousand sure. pounds a year with ten million of assets, they will pay two hundred and forty-nine thousand pounds yes. out of their okay. ten million. All right, a doctor with it's two million pounds of assets should say fine. Earn. It's an it's interesting argument, but I think we've moved on to another subject. <laughs> so it's a good time now to bring this uh, debate to an end as we come to the end of our time. And how we finish is that we'll now hear from the parties making their final pitches on why their party should be trusted on education. They've only got 30 seconds to do it in, and we'll do it in reverse order, starting with Tristram Hunt. No, you can say where oh, you are. Sorry. I'm sorry. We don't <laughs> sorry. want to tax you too no, much. No, 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 exactly, exactly. I use exactly. that metaphorically. Um, uh, I think the challenge in education policy in the next parliament is how to ensure that those communities who are feeling left behind by the challenge of globalisation, former coalfield communities, coastal towns, shire counties, how they have access to high quality teachers, great head teachers, the investment they need to succeed in the modern world. And how we also have a system of mass education which gets everyone where they need to be in terms of literacy and numeracy in the foundational subjects, but also reintroduces the creativity, the innovation, the enjoyment, the happiness, the wonder of education and learning, right. which I think we've lost in recent years. All right, Jonathan Arnott. In this era of four-party politics, every vote counts, and UKIP is leading the way. We're the only party whose sums add up, whose manifesto has been independently costed by a respected think tank. So we're not promising you the earth, but a future you can trust. It's not about paperwork, targets, or bureaucracy, but training our young people in the skills they need to make Great Britain a modern world leader. Thank you. James Humphreys. Well, I think we've heard uh, my colleagues here talking about the nature of the problem, but they're, the, what they're offering in return is so timid. It's timidity on a monumental scale. If we're serious about improving the life chances of young people in this country, we have to invest. It's no good simply saying the money isn't there. The money is there if you want it to be there. If you care about equality and you care about education, uh, we have, we've set out ways it can be done. David Laws. 
Well, Liberal Democrats are the party that is putting education first as our big priority. In government, we did deliver the front page manifesto pledge to introduce a two and a half billion pound pupil premium to give extra help to young people from the most disadvantaged backgrounds. In the next government, we would spend two and a half billion pounds more than Labour and five billion pounds more than the Conservatives. And this will enable us to employ the quality teachers we need to give every child a chance and to create both a strong economy and a fair society. Thank you for that. And Nikki Morgan. As a parent, what I want is every child to have a good local school to attend, which helps them to fulfill their potential. The Conservative Party wants every child to have the best possible start in life. At the end of the last Parliament, we have a million more children in schools rated good or outstanding, 100,000 more six-year-olds reading confidently, and more children taking GCSEs that are valued by universities and employers. We believe in securing Britain's future. That means having excellent schools and a highly educated workforce. Thank you. And that brings uh, our debate to an end for today.